Hey guys, Jason here. Today we're going to have a look at how to install Jose clipping diodes into the Origin 20. So this mod is based on the headfirst mod uh, that I published back in December last year, which, um, as you may know, converts an Origin 20 into a hot rodded uh, JCM 800 2204 style circuit. Well, we've added to that now, and what we have on this Origin is a three-way mini switch on the front of the amp, which sets up um, three-way Jose clipping settings. The middle position, there is no clipping, and then we've got two options on each side. Um, so we're gonna have a look at how to do that. Um, stick around. So we have the Origin 20. This is going through, this is the straight up head first modded Origin 20. We have no diode clipping on. I've got the gain at about nearly 3 p.m. The rest of the amp is pretty much at midday. I've got the master at about 10.30 a.m. And the tilt uh, pot, which still works uh, the same way as it does in the original origin is at midday as well so yeah look you know straight up this thing um it sounds pretty cool to me it's old school rock and roll this is a 1981 uh gold top les paul it's got thornbucker pickups and it's a thornbucker plus in the bridge um i love this guitar it's got a huge amount of weight to it it's heavy and it's got a three-piece maple neck um, fitted to this thing, which yeah, I really, I really dig. So, um, what we want to do is I want to just take you through kind of the you know the tones that we can get out of this now that we've got the Jose clipping in. What will follow this you know quick run through of the tones is the DIY guide about how to add the Jose diode clipping to the core headfirst mod which is featured in uh, a couple of previous videos in terms of a DIY guide. So let's move the amp into the first of the clipping modes, right? So I'm gonna move it into the first of the clipping here. That's the 20 volt Zenas. Um, it's, let's just call it, you know, kind of the first base in terms of Jose clipping mods. The amp is dialed in the same as it was. I've just brought the master volume up um, to compensate for the drop in volume that you get from the compression from the Zena diodes and I've just brought the bass back uh, the bass pot just back a little bit because you, you do find with the um, with this uh, the clippers come on you get a bit more bottom end that comes out of the amp so I've just brought the bass down a little bit to compensate for that and uh, here's how it sounds <laughs> Okay. 
If you've been following the channel, you have heard lots of demos of this tone, right? So I won't, uh, I won't go on. Let's move to the second clipping mode. Um, this is the asymmetric clipping. We've got a 5 volt Zener one way, a 24 volt Zener the other. And I will bring the master up even a little bit more because it will drop the overall volume. So look, you can if you don't implement the bright cap, and I don't put the bright cap in anymore. So this um, this Origin 20, I have not implemented the bright cap on the gain pot. I after trial and error and playing with the amp for quite a while, um, I don't believe it needs it anymore. So in my very first video, I think I said that, that I would keep my bright cap in my own Origin 20. I pulled it out. All right. I found that with a tilt uh, pot on these things, you can kind of compensate for uh, you know that bright cap effect, and you can pull the um, the tilt pot back to kind of get that you know no no bright cap kind of vibe. So with you know with no actual bright cap wired into the amp, um, you can bring the master up and uh, bring the gain back now. One thing to bear in mind that when you implement our mod to the Origin 20, the boost is reverse. Look, it's a long, complicated story as to why that is. It just is, right? So when you pull boost on the gain pot here, you can hear that, right? Pot clicked in, is more gain. Pull it out, is less gain. It just gets reversed. It's just the way it is, right? So... You can get a clean tone out of this thing. you're wondering but you know if you're going to mod this thing you're really going to head towards uh, that high gain uh, hot rod of 800 with Jose clipping now territory so stick around if you want to understand or uh, get an insight into how to add diode clipping into your Origin 20 we'll go through it now cheers guys so here we are looking at the insides of another headfirst modded Origin 20. This one has uh, our core mod applied to it, you know, which takes it into the kind of hot rodded 
JCM 800 territory as you might be aware but the, the topic of today's video is really to look at how to add Jose style Xena clipping diodes so I will quickly outline uh, the core mods just go through them here and then we'll move into a discussion about how to apply the uh, Jose clipping options to an Origin 20 you might do this if you've already made the headfirst mod to your Origin 20 I know a bunch of guys have you could continue that work and add this uh, these options to your amp or look if you're contemplating you know doing it from scratch uh, hopefully this video in conjunction with the early eclipse that I've done will allow you to um, go all the way in terms of these mods right so quite simply through the preamp section um, of the Origin 20 here these are you can see the replaced components I'm using these um, uh, these new resistors here you can see where I've bought them in here we've got our replacement um, first coupling cap here all of these mods are detailed in the earlier videos right so I'm just kind of showing them here again so you can you know kind of see them how I've implemented them again here and there's a couple of changes on the underneath of the board as well to link some of uh, the circuit together over here we've got um, a change in the capacity here we've got our new um, depth circuit in here and the negative feedback so all of these changes and these mods um, are outlined in early, earlier videos and in this clip we will go through like we always do a few core tones um, from the amp so you can kind of get, get the idea of you know, what this thing can deliver now uh, with these changes in it and how the, you know, how the different mods function and how to control them you can see here we've also put in our head first high voltage effects loop um, it is worth pointing out that if you were to implement these core mods to your Origin 20 you do lose the use of the effects loop right? the reason for that is that here's V2 here the back of the PCB this is the second preamp tube in the stock Origin 20 and the Origin 50 for that matter that tube is used to drive a tube buffered effects loop right, here's the effects loop on the back of the amp here and my mod what it does is to repurpose the use of this tube here to be part of the core circuit and this is where we get all the gain from right we now reconfigured v1 and v2 to be part of the same uh, continuous preamp circuit so if you really want to get an effects loop back into your amp you need to install a loop like this right so this is our high voltage metro style solid state loop um, I have a separate video on how you install one of these into an Origin 20 and you can see it's been installed with no um, jacks on it so normally in these loops you'd have um, PCB mounted cliff jacks and they would be in turn screwed into the back panel of your amp and mounted through the jacks that are actually on the board here so instead this is mounted on a standoff which is screwed into the into the Origins PCB and I've wired the effects loop into the send and return um, of the external effects loop so over to the what's going on here this is the this is how we set up the Jose clipping diodes right so off the top of this 100k resistor here this cathode follower uh, or resistor on the cathode of the cathode follower I've got a 10k resistor which is um, soldered into the top of this 100k right and it's coming straight out like vertically if you like and it's connected to this 0.47 uh, microfarad cap which in turn is the other leg of this cap is wired into or soldered into the bottom um, of C33 here on the PCB so this is C33 um, we've got um, nothing connected to the top of it the 10k resistor connects to where this 100k resistor is which is per the stock mod which as I said is in the earlier videos the cap comes off the top and is connected to here in reference to the schematic you can see in the schematic right what we're doing here is we're tapping off this 10k resistor and this coupling cap here 
um, off the top of that 100k resistor to ground to set us up to be able to feed the Jose clipping setup, the you know the Zena diodes, and also connect off to the tone stack where we go off to the you know the treble pot, middle and bass pots. So first and foremost, let's have a look at um, how we're doing the um, uh, the Zena clipping, the Zena diodes. So. Um, Ty, who owns this amp and sent it to me for modding, wanted the Xena clipping switch on the front of the amp. So this little mini switch here, which is connected, uh, you know, I drilled through the chassis, right, and mounted this. You could mount this switch on the rear of the amp, which is that way, if you so wished, um, and keep the front panel clean. He wanted it on the front, which is cool. It's a three-way switch, right? So left, middle, right. In reference to the schematic, again, we can see here, we've got three poles on the switch. The middle pole, we have a 220K resistor. The way I've implemented it, you can see I've just soldered that in, it comes straight up. On either side of this 100K resistor are two Zener diodes connected back to back. And by back to back, I mean, you know, facing each other, if you like, right? So you've got to get the, 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 the diode bands on the Zenas and either make them face away from each other or make them face towards each other. It doesn't matter as long as they're not pointing in the same direction. Okay, I've got heat shrink over the top of them just to keep them from, you know, getting anywhere near connecting to um, any other uh, reference points on here. So at the top of both sets of Zenas, two Zenas on one side, two Zenas on the other. In this amp, I did 20 volt Zena back to back on one side. The other side I did my asymmetric clipping, so I've got a 5.1 volt Zena back to back with a 24 volt Zena. Um, and I covered that in a, again in, in an earlier video, earlier video about asymmetric clipping. Um, so both of these sets of Zenas connect at one end onto each pole of the switch. At the other end they all connect together here. So the top of the 220k resistor which is in the middle this side of the Zenas, this side of the Zenas, they all connect at the top here. And then I've got some coax. Alright, just referencing it here, this is shielded coax cable. And on, uh, obviously with coax I have a signal wire and I've got a ground wire. And if you look carefully, and I will we'll show some kind of more close up pictures of this, the shielded coax is actually going to the bottom uh, of this 220k resistor here, so it's you know it's connected, soldered to the middle lug. That's a ground. That's our, that's actually our ground. Um, and I'll show you on the in the picture on the underneath of the board how this piece of this coax wire here is actually getting its ground reference because you can see it disappears and goes underneath the board there. The signal wire in the coax connects to the other end, and again. Uh, in reference to a picture of the underside of the board, you'll see um, where that signal wire is connecting to. It's back up here, at the top end of C33 um, on the PCB actually. Now just in reference to how this switch operates, right? so what, we need, what we're trying to do here is to use this mini switch to um, toggle which of these pairs of Zena diodes, remember you know, one's set up on the left, one's set up on the right, which of these pairs of Zenas is grounded, because as soon as you get a ground point on the Zena, then the current will, will, will attempt to flow to ground. So in the middle position, this is a three-way switch, right, it's on, off, on. In the middle position, neither of the pairs of Zena, Zenas are connected to ground, so kind of they have no effect, nothing's happening. Sure, the 220k to ground is still there, but um, it has minimal to no impact on the tone. You can disconnect this completely and play through the amp and you won't notice any difference. As soon as you switch this across, um, this Zena, these pairs, this pair of Zena diodes on this side will be grounded by way of the fact that the switch will connect the middle pole, which is already grounded, to this pole thereby grounding the Zenas and they then come into the circuit 
and have an impact on the tone by way of you know clamping the voltage and giving us that clipping sound and you know vice versa on the other side the same thing happens although when I flick the switch that way it's grounding the zenas on this side. I just want to draw your attention to um, how to wire up the Origin mods um, with the the Zena diodes in here. So, just what you're seeing here, the board at the bottom was from my mod video back in December, the original kind of head first 800 mods. Um, so, if you go back and look at that video, you'll see references to that. One at the top is the one uh, that I feature in this video, right? So this is a you know, more recent um, mod uh, of the origin. And you can see the yellow wires around V2. That's exactly the same as the black and the red. You know, I've just um, didn't use coax for either of them. It's fine. Um, just wire them like that, no problem. And the yellow one on the far left, in the top left corner, that's just... Um, if you notice from the first time I did this in December, there's a blue wire that I've got running on top of the PCB um, in that region. So um, it's because I kind of, as I was building that mod, I was learning as I went, and so I just put it on top there. I didn't want to pull, pull the PCB back out again. Now I'm doing this, you know, from scratch. Um, you run that underneath as well. It keeps the um, keeps everything consistent and tidy. Um, and there's the, right at the top of the board here, you'll see a piece of black coax. So let's have a look at that. Right, so this shielded coax um, is soldered to the right hand end, as looking, obviously right hand, when looking at the picture this way, the right hand end of that four pin header. Um, so this is the header that goes over to the pots for the tone stack, okay? So it's basically tone stack in and tone stack out, and those four headers. This is the coax that runs to the Zena diode switch, um, as already discussed on, on in the video, right? So this is how I've attached it. You can see that the signal uh, wire, the middle wire of the coax is connected to the uh, second pin. Um, to the left, and which is running on a track which goes forward, you know, down to the bottom of the picture here. That's actually connecting to the 0.47 uh, coupling cap for the diodes, the Zena diodes, right? And the far right uh, pin is a ground reference, so that's just grounding the coax there. Um, the other end of the coax, that shield, uh, the ground point is used on the switch, right? So when I talk about the switch, you would have seen that. So just looking down, what I've got here on the left is the Origin mod for, from December last year. So the original video, the original uh, Origin that I did. And on the right is this amp, so the one I've just done. Okay, you can see the blue wire first, first off on the left hand side here. That I just made a reference to that, right? So um, run that underneath the board um, if you're doing this for the first time. It just uh, keeps it away from any any of the signals. And the uh, thing I wanted to point out here really is that you do, um, there's a slightly different routing for getting the signal to the pots, to the tone stack pots, right? So on the left hand side, you can see that I've actually cut the, um, the gray wire and it runs up to the top of that 100K resistor. Um, which is our cathode follower. Now in the new mod on the right hand side you can see where I've got the the 10k resistor coming up the 0.47 microfarad coupling cap and then that connects to the coax underneath the board which then goes off to our, our Zena diode clipping switch. Just have a close look at the uh, the grey the grey coax Right, that connects um, to the header, which is just to the left of the Marshall logo. So if you look at the Marshall logo, which is just by the pots there down the bottom, you can see there's two grey wires that are running off that header. 
The one on the left connects to the header that's on the main PCB just underneath that new, um, you know, the large 0.47 microfarad coupling cap there. The other one on the right goes off to the phase inverter um, just like it does, and I show that in the, you know, the origin video, the mod video from last December. This is obviously a picture that is taken on the right here before we put the FX loop in. Okay, so we'll have a close look at how to um, connect this header because it's different, right? We're not going to solder that grey wire to the top of the 100k resistor anymore like we did in the original mod. We're going to run it to this header. So here it is at a different angle, right? So this is just viewing from the other side of the board. Um, and you can see just to the left of that big 0.47 microfarad cap which connects to the 10k resistor which connects to the top of the cathode follower there um, sitting in C33 that position there right that that large cap and see just behind it is that four pin header so we need to connect um, that header across to where the Marshall logo is right so you know, in the original Origin mod, you clip the end off that and you solder it to the um, to the top of that 100k resistor. If you've already made this mod and you've already clipped the end off your um, your coax there, don't worry. Just solder it directly onto the pin. Right. If you're doing this for the first time, then all you need to do is use I used a box cutter to separate the um, separate the header because it's a four pin header and you, and you just want two pins for the plug I use the box cutter to um, to cut those and separate them and here's just the final view of that right so you can see that grey coax is running um, from those two pins to those those two pins just just look at the color coding here right this is the way to follow it if you look at the picture look at the white and the black wires that run um, from the header where the pots are to the header um, to at the bottom of the picture there. Just follow, follow the colour coding, you can't go wrong. So just for a little bit more information about how the uh, the Jose Xenodiodes are set up in this configuration, we'll just have a quick look at the scope. I just want to show, uh, I'll show you a few different waveforms at different points in this part of the amp. So, just for context, right, what I'm doing here is I am running a 150 millivolt sine wave into the front of the amp, into the input of the amp. My scope here um, has dual purpose, right, so it can do um, waveform generation here, and then on the second, or oh, the first channel here, I'm uh, measuring um, the uh, signal at that point in the amp. At the moment, I've got the probe connected to the top of that 100k resistor, the cathode follower, right? So I've um, played with the gain. So here I am adjusting the gain, preamp gain on the front of the amp here. And I'm just dialing it in, so I want to get about 100 volts there. Okay, so here we have 100 volts. It's, it's, there's a little bit of shape on that sine wave, but you can see it's still pretty, pretty clean at that point. So just on the for the Origin 20, I've got no boost on, and I've got the preamp gain at about two and a half of ten, uh, just to get that kind of clean signal there. So I've now moved the probe to the other side of the 10k resistor that comes off that uh, the output on the cathode follower there, and you can see it's washed off kind of you know 10 uh, sorry 20 volts peak to peak on the signal here. So you can actually play, if you're really into it, right, you can you can play with the value of that 10k resistor to get the kind of peak-to-peak um, -peak voltage you want here before you get into the clipping because with the combination of that 10k resistor and the, and the value of the Zener voltage that you apply um, for the clipping diodes, it will determine where this wave gets clipped 
and clamped, right? And when we turn the zeners on, you'll see what happens to the sine wave. I will point out that I've got the scope set up for AC coupling, right, on the probe here. What that means is that I am only reading the AC signal on the line at this point in the amp, just the AC signal. So I'm kind of eliminating the DC voltage. One of the beauties of um, of electronics is that both DC and AC can simultaneously exist on the same wire. So at this point in the amp, which is on the other side um, of that 10K resistor, it's 156 volts DC. So if I had DC coupling set on the oscilloscope, um, my wave here wouldn't be centered at the zero point, right? Um, so it's just a nice way. If you use AC coupling, you can eliminate the DC um, that the AC signal is riding on top of is the kind of the way I think of it. Which is why the 0.47 uh, microfarad cap is there because on one side of that cap, on the cathode follower side of that cap, um, it's 156 volts DC, as I said. On the other side of that cap, only the AC, AC signal passes. I'm now measuring on the other side of that capacitor, and I've still got my 80 volts peak to peak, but it's 0 volts DC now. Right? So um, now we can actually work with the signal and start to apply the Zena uh, diode clipping to our signal so let's do that okay so let's move this thing into the 20 volt zener so it's 20 volt back to back okay so that means we've got a clamping a peak to peak clamping voltage of let's call it 40 volts um, you, you do need to add a little bit because you do get some uh, dropping voltage from the forward facing zener um, I do touch on that on an on a earlier video from from memory so I'm expecting to get you know something in the high 40s uh, peak to peak and 51 okay so you can see with the Zena right so what's that actually happening here and I do explain in an earlier video how Zena's Zena uh, clipping works but it's just clamping the voltage at these two points call it roughly plus or minus 20 volts from the zero point okay so now remember remember that 10k resistor that comes off the cathode follower it's dropped the voltage to 80 peak to peak and we had a hundred on the on the other side of it so you can play with the value of that to get this peak to peak voltage into a range where the clipping will have either a massive effect or a modest effect or simply keep the 10k resistor there and then play around with the voltages of your zener diodes okay so you know obviously with 20 volt zeners we've got a peak to peak there of 50 um, if I chose much lower values then it's going to clamp it much harder and I'm moving the switch now into the second clipping position where I've got a 5.1 volt zener and a 24 volt zener. So if you add those together, um, you know, we're approaching 30 volts peak to peak. Um, add a little bit and you can see we're at kind of 36 here peak to peak. So the two, here's the two options, right? Clipping mode one, clipping mode two. And here's the unclipped signal. Thank you. 